Hey, what's up guys? It's Matt Rod here again with Control Free and today we're going to be showing you four fundamental principles on how to get a good sounding audio mix. Just the beginner stuff. We're not going to go too deep in depth. So this this is a video for everybody. All right, let's get to it. All right, so tip number 1 is balance your levels. Make sure that the levels of all your tracks are balanced so that not one individual track is taking over the rest of the sounds in the mix. Why do you want to do this? Well, when you balance the levels, this prevents any single element from dominating the mix and allowing all parts of the mix to be heard clearly. All right, I'm going to show you an example right here. All right, so we're in Ableton. We're in my DAW. It could be your DAW, any, any DAW. It doesn't matter. We have a little couple elements here. We have a perk, perk roll. We have a drum rack, and we have a sample. And I'm keeping it simple here so you can hear what's out of balance. And I'm pretty sure you'll hear it when I play it. All right, there's something clearly out of balance there. The sample's way too loud. There's too much reverb. There's too much delay. There's too much noise on it. This is a perfect example of when you want to balance your levels out on, on everything in your mix. So we're going to go into this track here and look at it. Oh, wow. The DB, uh, the DB is pushed up to 6 plus 6 dB. Let's turn that back down to zero. Let's look at the reverbs. All the reverb sends are all the way up. Let's turn them down. Let's bring them all down. Let's hear it while it's in the mix. Still too much. Maybe no reverb. Mess with the with the gain a little bit, gain stage it a little bit, get get the gain going, and so basically here was a perfect example of now what we had before, completely out of whack loop, to now something that sits a little bit more with the drums and allows the other parts and the other elements of the song to come through. Much better sample and you can work with that and do that to all the part all the parts of the uh, mix and see how it all sits together all right so tip number two is pan for clarity using panning to create a sense of space and separation in your mix can help a lot why this really matters is because panning allows you to place instruments and vo vocals in the stereo field making the mix sound wider and more spacious this helps to prevent elements from clashing in the center and making the mix sound more interesting, which is the goal. How to achieve it? Panning different elements like the guitars against the keyboards, backing vocals, the drums left to right, while keeping the most important elements, lead vocals, bass, kick in the center, aim for a, a balanced stereo image, which will allow you to have a overall better sounding mix. All right, I'm gonna show you an example of this right here. All right, so tip number two, I'm going to show you guys how to use panning for clarity and to make a more interesting sound out of your mix. So basically here I have my intro, which goes from one mono track to another. Sounds pretty interesting. Sounds pretty pretty distinct between each other, but it's, it, they still don't sound, you know, they, it almost sounds like no change really happened, even though there's a drastic change there. You know, you can do other things like use drums, but we can use panning for this as well. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to duplicate the sample where it drops. Pan one to the right, pan one all the way to the left. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is we're going to alternate reverb on one and delay on another. Fully cranked all the way up and let's hear how it sounds now. If you have headphones on, you can clearly hear a more open, more more breadth of sound and much more differentiation from the beginning, which was kind of tunneled, boxed in into an open. Now we're into the verse. We're into the beginning of the song, the main uh, a clarity into the to the main melody of the song that we're trying to mix. Um, and so there's that. And then there's one other thing you can do. You can use a phaser flanger, which basically automates this for you going left and right. 
and or a flanger, whichever, however you want to call it. I never know how how to correctly pronounce it, but it basically automates the stereo process going left and right. So let's hear what it sounds like with it on. And obviously you can do it all with taste, but that basically just adds it uh, adds some depth to the stereo image so that the listener's ear never really gets bored. All right, tip number three is to use automation in Automate for Dynamics. So this is just using automation to add movement and dynamics to your mix to make a more interesting sound and to just keep the listener's ear entertained. The reason why you want to do this is because automation allows you to make precise adjustments to the volume, panning, effects, and other different parameters over time, keeping the mix engaging and dynamic, and just basically making it so that the person who's listening never gets bored without overdoing it too much because you got to do everything with taste and here's an example right here all right so here i'm going to show you guys how to use automation to control the dynamics or to make the dynamics more interesting in your mix um, so right here i have an example of the same loops we've been using with an eq8 on it and so now what would it sound like if I took about half these dynamics away? Right, it's still pretty, it's, it's pretty closed, right? Now let's see if I can automate this to make this sound interesting. So luckily in Ableton, there's a way to track all the movements you make while something's happening. I just gotta press this and I'm good to go. So I don't know how, how, however you need to achieve this in your DAW, you can as well, but this is just an example of how automation uh, makes for a more interesting sound in the mix. So I did some editing there and basically what you can see there is I created some automation to kind of dip out dip out a lot of the main parts of the sound take them out and make this slow opening more opening opening more uh, just more and more just close from close to opening after it had already opened from the intro kind of creating for an even longer elongated kind of second part to the opening to an intro kind of probably like a long a song with a longer intro than most but here's just that's just one example of how you can use automation to create more interesting sounds all right, so tip number four is to check your mix on different systems. If you got car speakers, your studio head monitors, your studio headphones, your cell phone speaker, any speaker you can get your hands on. The reason why is because different playback systems can reveal issues in artifacts that you couldn't hear on different speakers. Maybe your cell phone speaker on pretty much all mono can catch something that your studio monitor speakers couldn't catch because they were blending them so well in the high quality or vice versa. Maybe you you couldn't you caught something in your car speakers because they're surround sound in, in, that you didn't catch on your studio monitors. Um, so basically just test it on any, any speakers you got, Bluetooth, headphones, your ear pods, anything you got, test it out on multiple sources and you can find different errors in the mix. All right, and so you made it to the end of the video. Thank you for making it this far. Please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe if you liked what you saw. If you want to comment something you liked or something you didn't like, feel free to leave it below. If you want to comment how your day was going, that works too. Uh, just want to thank you all for coming out. And the bonus tip is to mix at low volumes. You want to mix at low volumes to ensure that your mix sounds good at different listening levels to prevent ear fatigue so that way you can hear different things and you know maybe you want to hear your bass super loud and then you you already know what your melody is supposed to sound like so you want to hear your melody a little bit lower feel free to you know mess around with different volumes but try to start at low that way you don't give yourself ear fatigue throughout 
uh, mixing the entire project. Why this matters is because mixing at lower volume helps you hear the balance and clarity of your mix without the distortion that can come from high levels. It also reduces your ear fatigue like I said before, so allowing you to make more accurate decisions over long periods of time. And basically just gotta take care of your ears, they're your money makers. And until next time, next time guys, I appreciate you coming out. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me something you liked, something you didn't like. It's all good. Tell me if you want to hear, if you want to see a specific type of tutorial next, and we'll get right to it. Thanks. Peace.